Environmental interpretation involves translating the technical language of a natural science. into terms and ideas that people who are not scientists can readily understand. An understanding of the forces that shape the Earth makes environmental interpretation easier and more rewarding. Often, the surface features of the landscape offer clues as to what lies beneath. Environmental interpretation is like a giant puzzle, where each of the topics of natural science like geology, biology, flora, fauna, history, are just one of the pieces of that giant puzzle. At the beginning, with just few pieces, it's very difficult to read the landscape. The more pieces you collect, the more knowledge about natural science you have, the clearer the picture will become at the end. We will try to read the landscape of Killarney and its environs by walking a circular road, interpreting what we encounter along the way. The King's Bridge Built in the early 1800s, was the entrance to the former Kermare estate, belonging to the Earl of Kermare. The Gate Lodge, built in 1834 in the architectural style of Cottage Arne, provided accommodation for a gatekeeper, often in charge of tall collection at the entrance of the estate. Just after King's Bridge to the right, the remains of Ibero Road extended to the Western Domain, all the way to the former Royal Victoria Hotel, which is now the site of the actual Castle Rouge Hotel, heading towards Kilorgny. River Dinek, which now runs parallel to the Port Road, had its course altered in the late 1700s to accommodate the building of a corn mill and provide power to drive the mill wheel. This building was so important to the local economy that in the early 1800s it produced its own form of currency. Before the road was built, there was a promenade called the Mall. The mill was demolished in the late 1850s and a new road was built and it was called the Port Road, as it led to both ports, Dingle and Balikisan in Kalorgne. There was a row of lime trees planted alongside the road. Almost 200 years later, some of these trees stand tall as a testimony of past times. The present Knockery House and the surrounding landscape gardens look a bit different today. Knockrier was the site where the 4th Earl of Kenmare chose to build a mansion in 1872, maybe under the recommendation of Queen Victoria, since the site has a wonderful panoramic view of the lower lake and the mountains beyond. The former mansion, named Killarney House, was one of the best in the country, with 110 rooms and large landscape gardens with even its own tennis court. Unfortunately, the mansion was accidentally destroyed by fire in 1913 and later abandoned, where it lay derelict for decades. Beatrice Grosvenor, the niece of the seventh Earl, inherited the estate in 1952, and in later years she demolished the ruins of Killarney House to build the present Knockerier House in 1958. Only some terraces, walls and steps of the former gardens remain today. This cottage was known as the Dairy Cottage 
a small tea house where Lady Kenmare could spend time in a more secluded place. In June 1969, former French President Charles de Gaulle hired the cottage from Beatrice Grosvenor, where he spent two weeks on holidays. As a mark of celebration, a French camera crew made a documentary to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Charles de Gaulle's visit to Ireland. We followed the old road to the Royal Victoria Hotel. As we can see, the path is on the left today. But on closer inspection, we can see three big lime trees aligned, almost two meters in diameter, a clear sign that the road was next to them. The native male red deer tend to form bachelor groups. At the end of the summer, they become intolerant of each other due to the increased levels of testosterone. This hormone, triggered by changes in light and darkness, stimulate the cleaning of the velvet that covers the antlers. The hill on where we stand now is a moraine ridge, an accumulation of sand and stones carried by the glaciers. At the top of the hill, another lime tree, almost 200 years old, marked the old Iveter Road that continues up ahead to the former Royal Victoria Hotel. From the hill, a fine view of the lake commands the sea. This place was chosen by former inhabitants to build a house called Prospect House. Today, only an avenue of lime trees and an old well are the standing evidence of human presence in the site. The landscape is dynamic, always changing, moving and being rearranged. Though these changes occur so slowly that we cannot see them. The Killarney Mountains were formed approximately 300 million years ago, when two gigantic continents collided. Gondwana, coming from the south, crash against Euro-America, coming from the north, uplifting and folding rocks deposited during the Devonian and Carboniferous periods. This is the reason why the trend of the faults and faults is west to east. Two million years ago, the global temperatures began to fall. Some of the snow that had fallen in winter remained throughout the summer and was compacted by the snowfall of the next winter. Over thousands of years, ice sheets built up gradually. Where the ice was on a slope, it tended to move downwards, and so glaciers formed. An enormous ice sheet, hundreds of meters thick, spread across the area. Glacial tongues scoured the V-shaped valleys previously carved by streams, changing them into U-shaped valleys. Several peaks protruded above the ice sheet, known as noon attacks. There were perhaps as many as six periods of advancing and retreating ice sheets. Today, we can only see the evidence of the last one. When temperatures rose, the ice began to melt, and glaciers retreated, leaving ground-up rocks as moraines.
So, when you are on your next walk, slow down a bit. Try to see the landscape with different eyes. Ask yourself the question, why? Why is this tree growing here and not there? Why is this river straight and not meandering? Why do we have a hill here and not there? Why do we have different types of vegetation in different places? Is there any evidence of human presence in this area? Have you noticed the wildlife around you? You can find the answers to all of these questions if you have the knowledge which natural science provides. This knowledge will in turn reveal the meaning and our relationship of the world we live in.